UFC CEO Dana White handing out a $300,000 performance bonus for this weekend's UFC 300 pay-per-view. The historic card takes place in Las Vegas, which features 12 current or former champions. Ask and you shall receive. After White asked the fighters what they wanted, this chapter was pointed out that the promotion gave out a 100K bonus for UFC 100. All right, let's welcome in our combat sports analysts, Luke Thomas and Brian Campbell. Luke, I'm gonna give you first word in terms of just how we should react or add some context to this 300K bonus here. What are your thoughts in regards to what was given out and obviously talked about over the weekend? Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what kind of effect it, it has. I, and I actually don't know that, right? Here's what I mean by that. If you're somebody on the main card like Oliveira and Saryukian, where the winner of that ostensibly gets a title shot, you're going to be very careful about how you fight because if you win, you can get a lot more than 300000 on the line. You can get a title shot and all the money that comes with that. If you lose, it could be financially or otherwise career ruinous. So I don't know how much it's going to compel them. At the same time, though, it could compel someone on the preliminary card to really do more. But here's the rub right the the awards these performance bonuses they typically go to main carters over preliminary cards and i've got one more detail that's usually quite true but remember the first fight on this card is between two former champions so it's an interesting dynamic that's at play here and how much this will incentivize action but it's just really hard to tell based on a few of these factors and oh by the way anybody who's on this card is a certified animal who already fights like an action fighter anyway so i'm expecting good fights no matter what it's just hard to say exactly how much this extra financial incentive will spur more action or potentially recklessness i mean that's a safe way to say it luke the aggressive way is did you see the reaction from the fighters at thursday's press conference literally celebrating fist pumping right like they're on the NCAA tournament tournament or something this thing this is potential intention here it will turn up the volume and increase the damage the violence and the excitement we're going to see all right we're good on uh, bc's audio by the way but he got excited maybe about that 300k too that perhaps may be coming his way for performance bonuses uh, as we take a look at the main card i'm actually going to go to bc first but i want to make sure that audio is fine so luke i'm going to start with you because both of you guys picked lightweight fights uh, you go with charles Oliveira and armand saruki in here take us through why this interests you the most among the plethora of options at our menu yeah, I mean, listen, the reality of something is is this. There are basically two sports with inside MMA. There's 155 and down, and then there's 185 and up. 170 is kind of a tweener. They're just different sports. Anything 155 and down is going to be, in, in all likelihood, significantly better. This is a great example. You've got a 20-something in Armin Saryukian who's gave in his UFC debut current champion Islam Makachev everything he could handle and then some uh, can wrestle has a physique like you just would not believe has a, a motor that doesn't quit and has gotten a lot better over time in fact both of these guys are coming off of wins over division stalwart Benil Dariush in the case of Charles Oliveira the guy with the most submissions in UFC history and oh by the way he can punch people's lights out as well former champion in the weight class. The winner here is almost certain to get a title shot, I guess, unless the fight is like really boring or something. Listen, there's lots of great choices you could make on this card for the fight you're most looking forward to, the one that is the most interesting. But this one is, to me, the greatest marriage of both the violence and action quotient that people are expecting, as well as stakes and a cerebral approach to the game. Both guys highly skilled. It has every kind of touch point you want that makes a fight special. All right, it looks like we lost Brian Campbell. So, Luke, you and me the rest of the way here. Let's get to the main event. Alex Pereira is the champ, but this is his first title defense in this weight class. Light heavyweight here, uh, of course, against Jamal Hill, comes in as a small underdog. Uh, under what lens are you watching this main event? So this is a very interesting one as well. I mean, I guess the way that I would look at it is you have a guy in Jamal Hill with some big questions about him. Number one, remember, he hasn't fought in 15 months. Why? Because he tore his Achilles tendon playing basketball. And this fight came together, I would say, relatively quickly. So there are some questions of, did he look ready on the scales today for the weigh-ins? Yes, he did. But there could be a bit of an expedited timeline going on. How will that affect his performance? Assuming that's not in play, what you're looking at here is Jamal Hill. Does he have the overall kickboxing skill of the current champion, Alex 
Pereira. No, we're talking about a guy who was a multi-weight champion in kickboxing, one of its more esteemed organizations called Glory. He doesn't have that, but he has a dynamite punch, very good boxing, and he just brings the fight to people. I mean, this is a guy who can really do things when he gets inside that mid-range and really begins to stick it to people. And listen, for as good as Alex Pereira is, and he's got the best left hook in the business and some of the best leg kicks in the business, he's famous for it. He's not super defensively responsible. I don't, I'm not going to say he has bad defense, but he doesn't have the best defense I've ever seen. Certainly, uh, it, there are tons of ways in which he has been caught previously, both in kickboxing and MMA, where did it cost him every time? No, but he's been tagged a lot. So it's just a really dangerous fight in both directions. But had more skills, but I'm going to say Jamal Hill, a little bit more willingness to mix it up. How that will play out should be a ton of fun on Saturday night. We don't have BC, but his selection was Gaethje and Holloway. We know Holloway moving in different uh, weight class as well for the BMF title here. Don't know if you guys had talked about it on your podcast, but what are you thinking about this particular one? I mean, this was a hard fight to pick against. When I when the producers asked me, hey, what's the best fight on this main card? I almost went with that one, but it seems like too safe of a choice. But really, it's a great one just the same. I mean, Max Holloway, former featherweight champion, moving up to 155, which he's done before, and he had not the best results, but it was against Dustin Poirier, another division hammer. And so he still gave that guy tons of problems, went back to 145. Now he's back to 155 again, but this time he says he's learned the lessons on how to put on the weight the right way, and he's going to face just Justin Gaethje, who is an absolute punishing striker who has changed the careers of guys in a single meeting. Tony Ferguson, May of 2020, stands out there. He also has dynamic leg kicks, and both of these guys have a willingness to exchange that is hard to overstate. Max Holloway has landed the most significant strikes of any fighter, dot, 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 in UFC history. That's who we're talking about here, and by the way, has never been knocked down, much less knocked out. So you're just talking about the immovable object meets the irresistible force and what's going to happen there. I don't know. You had asked me earlier about the 300K bonus. These guys <laughs> could have no bonus, and they'd be going out there and trading to the most insane degree. You add 300K on the line, it's probably going to up the ante even more. What are the chances, in your opinion, that we get a Conor McGregor type of headline grabber this weekend? Tons of rumors circulating around that. I'd say the chances are pretty decent, but I... There's still a lot of questions about his readiness, about how far in advance they want to announce something like that anyway. Where would it be? They have put some other things out there. They did make a formal Abu Dhabi return in October. Uh, they did get, go ahead and announce that one. So, uh, listen, it's UFC 300. They always do have big announcements for this one. There'll probably be another one for the UFC Hall of Fame. I would expect that as well. And certainly, there is a lot of anticipation about his return. I'd say the chances are pretty good, but from what I'm hearing, not it's not exactly clear that it's a shoe-in for Saturday night, but certainly all eyes will be on the broadcast for any number of different reasons. A little over a minute left then in terms of this 300 pay-per-view. I looked at the main card, the prelims, and even the early prelims. It looks pretty good to me here, Luke. What are the chances fans will have to dig in early and enjoy MMA throughout the day and night? The very first fight on this card features two former champions. The first one. That is unheard of. I was around for UFC 200. It wasn't like that. UFC 100, just the same. I will leave you with this stat. Of every fighter who has ever held a title in the UFC, think of that entire group, 10% of them are on this card. That's how many people of elite significance are up and down this card. And to your point, it's not just the main card that you have to pay for, the free portions on the, the prelims at eight and then the early prelims at six, it's hammer after hammer, banger after banger of all the cards to miss. This is not the one. All right, Luke Thomas on HQ Spotlight. And for a brief moment, Brian Campbell. Luke, certainly <laughs> appreciate it. If you see BC, tell him I said what's up. All right, uh, we take a look at this main card again. Co main sees women's strawweight champ Zhang Wei Li, a big favorite to defend her title against Yan Zhao Nan. Prelims also include Holly Holm and Kayla Harrison in the women's bantamweight bout. And again, from top to bottom, a monster, monster card.